"'That poor old man is lonely,' she said. "'And think of it, a genuine eighteenth-century high-society ball.' "'He mused. "'I'd rather we just went on our way. "'I'm not... "'What's that?' "'Sarah groaned. "'Not your big cats again?' "'He looked surprised. "'It's an engine!' They both looked at the source of the noise and saw, emerging through the black, naked trees, the lumbering, scarlet shape of a double-decker bus. They watched it labour out of sight like a rare and fabulous beast slipping back into the forest's obscurity. "'Ah, well,' said the doctor at length, "'you'd be surprised how many things aren't where they're supposed to be in time.' "'Listen,' he said, "'perhaps we ought to go to this ball and hobnob with the locals. "'You look like you could do with a good night out.' He blinked again. There was no denying it. It was definitely her. Across the ballroom, through the rustle and press of all those dresses, the doctor could see her quite clearly stretched out on a sofa and observing the proceedings with a benign expression of amusement. Her large, inelegant body was tucked primly into a fashionable pale olive frock. The doctor shuffled and slid across the highly polished floor until he stood before her. Iris? Doctor, she smiled, glancing up. She held out one brilliantly white-gloved hand for him to kiss. I'd heard you were in the vicinity. Well, I wish I'd known you were here, he said rudely. Oh, don't be all cross with me, she giggled and fluffed up the ostrich feathers sprouting from her tiara. Don't I look the part? In this time and place, I'm known as Lady Iris Wildtime. Isn't that marvellous? "'In the eighteenth century I am rather grand "'and earn a beautiful home in the north.' "'The doctor rolled his eyes. "'You're determined to have a house in every century on this planet, aren't you? Oh, "'You know me. I never like to settle in one place.' "'Suddenly the doctor gave one of his disarming grins. "'It's good to see you again, Iris,' he said, "'grasping her podgy hand and giving it a brisk shake. "'He had forgotten.' upon first seeing Iris here, that he actually enjoyed her company. Their paths had crossed on only a few occasions in the past, and when they did, it was never dull. 